grow to business. Let's get started with our first fireside chat of the day. That's transforming procurement in the Middle East, trends and strategies with Payesh Malvia, Vice President and Head MEA at Moglish. Payesh, hi, how are you? Very good, Neil. Nice to see you again after a long time. Absolutely. Lovely to see you too. Great to have you back with us. And uh, you had the pleasure of opening the show with us today, so no pressure at all. Um, we've got sort of 20, 25 minutes, and I do like to make sure we get some questions in from the audience too. But I'm going to start with a, a fairly specific question to begin with. Um, I'd like to look at some of the trends shaping the procurement landscape in the Middle East. But particularly, let's think along the lines of are there particular trends that are affecting this region compared to other parts of the world? Yeah, no, very pertinent question. And, uh, you know, needless for me to say, but given the broader macroeconomic and geopolitical scenario, obviously this region becomes a very interesting and happening region, affected region in many ways, right? So uh, if you look at the macroeconomic scenario, uh, key things that are, or key trends that are shaping up, first is supply chain resilience, which has a lot to do with risk, which has a lot to do with, you know, how to get materials here, which has a lot to do with how do we localize procurement? How do we do more in-house? How do we de-risk from certain supply chain? Because, you know, this region, it is so connected. Everything comes in from all over the world. So that's like a very, very hot topic. Secondly, uh, you know, if you have been following the ESG COP28 developments, so sustainability ESG practices are very, very hot trend in this part of the region. I should say, again, driven top down right from the leadership, the country's leadership level as well. Right. Uh, third would be digital transformation uh, because, you know, uh, it has its own nuances the supplier ecosystem the service provider ecosystem uh, is very different uh, it's also you know needs to be localized in terms of language in terms of supply chains in terms of availability of the materials in terms of connecting to different geographies of the world uh, right so uh, digital transformation has its own unique uh, uh, i should say perspective of look looking at uh, middle east as a region uh, and fourth point for me would be uh, the key strategic partnerships that are ha happening here because again you know it's a complex region partnerships are very important mutual knowledge sharing is very important so i would say these four points majorly supply chain resilience de and de-risking digital transformation esg as well as strategic partnerships and types that's a, a very thorough run through there. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and I do want to pick up a little bit further on what you were saying about digital transformation. Because digital transformations are at different speeds at different organizations across borders and so forth, how do you feel that's impacting procurement uh, practice in the region when it comes to uh, digital transformation? Because it's a day to day change. There's a, there's a new invention almost every day or innovation, it seems, every day. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, half of the answer lies in your question right there, Neil, uh, because of the you know new innovations day to day digital transformation is more about keeping up with the market, right? Uh, is more about being agile. So one of the major benefits of digital transformation is keeping up to date, being agile and responsive to the market needs. Uh, one of the unique things I have seen in this region is. Uh, digital transformation is started with key focus areas like efficiency, transparency, visibility, and cost reduction. So that's how it started. But now I see, you know, more importance given to uh, uh, value adds like collaboration, value adds like being more customer centric uh, by using, you know, digital transformation. How can you be more responsive to the customer? And, you know, that keeps you, uh, uh, say, better positioned vis-a-vis -vis the competition, uh, right? Uh, so people are using digital transformation for better, more customer centricity per se, apart from the you know usual levers like efficiency, visibility, cost reduction, which would be obvious to assume. No, I, I really like your point there about making sure you're, you're trying to keep pace with the pace of change, which is a challenge in itself. I think that's, that's absolutely critical. Um, 
One thing I want to move on to next, again, looking at the specific challenges within the, the Middle East uh, region, is we're often talking about companies uh, were operating in the area with global footprints. But there's going to be different challenges in, say, the Middle East, Dubai sort of region compared to North America, Europe, Australasia, uh, China, for example. What do you yeah. think the specific challenges are in the region and, and how important is it that you tailor your approach to that region? Yeah. See, uh, again, it's slightly linked to, you know, supply chain needing to be more resilient because there are specific macro challenges related to supply chains dependence on many countries, right? And it flowing through. So if you talk about a lot of goods being imported from countries like China, right? There is very high dependence on how does the entire sea route works coming from China, right? Is there any instability there which is affecting uh, the predictability uh, in terms of time of arrival of the goods, right? Secondly, there are challenges in the sense of local cultural differences. You have to, uh, like, Arabic is a key language. Then there are countries like UAE, which are very multi multicultural as well, right? So it's not, uh, it ho hosts people from over 190 geography. So if you are a retail focused company, uh, right, you have to solve for those particular challenges to address all the client needs, all the customer needs, right? Uh, so geopolitical instability, supply chain risks, and I should say lack of visibility and control because of too many levers out of your control is a major part. Uh, third point would be uh, lack of local sourcing and manufacturing. That's where a lot of focus via ESG and make in the Emirates, make in the kingdom initiatives are, you know, being focused on to make sure that there are alternative manufacturing avenues, alternative sourcing avenues locally available in the markets, right? So these would be the key challenges. One area you mentioned uh, in my first question was about sustainability and ESG factors. How yeah. do you feel they're influencing procurement decisions in the Middle East at the moment? Do you feel that's a really critical driver at the moment, one of the largest uh, areas of change and transformation? Yeah, yeah of course, of course. So I, th I would say it started as more of a pledge that we want to be more sustainable, we want to be more responsible towards environment, social, uh, you know, uh, uh, factors uh, as a corporate. Uh, what started as a pledge, now we see a lot of on the ground action happening. Uh, when it comes to procurement, one of the important factors to consider is, you know, uh, brand reputation. Uh, how as procurement am I helping my company's brand as a, you know, leading player in ESG? Because if you look at the countries uh, right from COP28, there is a very strong commitment that I want to be up there. So procurement plays a key role uh, in terms of local sourcing, in terms of sustainable sourcing, uh, right, to make sure in terms of reducing the carbon footprint, right? and working with the suppliers, collaborating with the vendors to make sure, you know, they are aligning or they are impacting positively towards the company's uh, ESG goals, right? So procurement has a lot to do there in terms of brand reputation. Cost savings, obviously, you know, if you look at the long-term sustainable sourcing also leads to cost savings eventually may add up uh, some costs in the short term, but long term, it may lead to cost savings as well. Uh, third factor would be risk management, because that's where a lot of local sourcing efforts, a lot of make it uh, in the local, developing the local SMB vendor base kind of efforts come in, uh, wherein, again, procurement plays uh, the leading role. Because one question I do like to ask a man of, of your experience, you've got a lot of perspective about how things have changed over a period of time. When it comes to sustainability and, and ESG initiatives within procurement, how do you feel that's changed over the last few years? Is, is the pace picking up? Is, is it changed beyond all recognition from you know, five, ten years ago? How, do you, how quickly do you feel things are changing from your experience? Oh, okay. So I think I've been in the region slightly less than four years. Uh, when I landed here, uh, the first impression was, okay, ESG is all about reporting. You just have to 
a makeup pledge and maybe not do something about it and you know within a small span relatively small span of for four years we are now seeing almost every element of sourcing almost every element of a strategy uh, having a part of ESG in it a lot of companies have dedicated you know managers looking after ESG as an initiative uh, countries like UAE in country value uh, has been rolled out across all the top corporates right so it's changing very very rapidly uh, much faster than you know you would imagine uh, from idea to execution and that's what uh, keeps uh, I should say sets the region apart in terms of pace of change and execution because that uh, the time it takes for them to move from an idea to an execution is just very, very rapid, very, very fast. And that, that is tremendously exciting. And I guess where I want to go next with the questions leads into that very well. Uh, technology such as AI, blockchain, so forth. How do you feel that's playing a role in transforming procurement processes? Uh, not just within sustainability, but from a wider perspective. Do you feel that is really what is powering the pace of change, the advancement in technology? Yeah. No, uh, so, okay. So when it comes to uh, technology, I think, obviously, the, you know, there are like the very obvious answers of how do you use AI and machine learning and, you know, right from the government itself, which is a key flag bearer of AI, you look at G42 initiative by Abu Dhabi government, right? So you would see AI and machine learning in almost everything that they do, that they try and do, right? So technology is taking a very important key and central role in the overall strategy for large corporates as well as government in UAE. Uh, from procurement, I think the major use cases are around predictive analytics. How do I predict my demand better? Second is customer centricity. How do I customize my offering in mass, right? Uh, the biggest thing, the most important issue with customization is it becomes very limited. You can't really address a very wide audience. And that's where AI machine learning helps you customize for masses. And that's where, you know, you give a very unique feeling to your clients uh, while being very efficient at the back end in terms of efficient and fast at the back end in terms of execution All right so uh, i think prediction predictive analytics as well as uh, mass customization are two major use cases of ai and machine learning uh, in procurement i think it's very important to mention blockchain and robotic process automation as the key technologies being used these days uh, blockchain mainly from a transparency point of view and traceability point of view where my goods are sourced from uh, from a cost adherence perspective from a esg perspective from you know even otherwise just controlling the supply chain point of view so that i know i need potential i can and foresee any potential disruptions or I can very quickly reverse engineer any problems that I've seen in the uh, supply chain, right? And third is robotic process automation, uh, which is more like, you know, just more automation of daily tasks, mundane tasks. That's where AI is also helping. Uh, AI, I should say, is has made it easier for companies to just, you know, execute it uh, and adopt pro robotic process automation at a fraction of the cost than what it was earlier. You've laid out really well exactly how some of that technology is playing a, a huge and growing role. Do you fear anyone who doesn't really embrace these advances are the ones who risk being left behind? <laughs> uh, I think it's a no-brainer question now, Neil. We are sitting in 2024. Uh, I think it, this would have still been a relevant question to ask five years back. But post-COVID, post all the kind of geopolitical instability, post so much of globalization, uh, right? Customers are more and more demanding. Uh, forget about left behind. Uh, you would cease to exist in business if you do not uh, adapt to technologies, if technology is not at the core, if you are not agile enough, if you are not resilient enough. Uh, right. So it's not only the question of being left behind, it's a mere question of survival, uh, uh, you know, of existence as well. 
Yeah, I, I, I do agree. When I, whenever I speak to procurement or technology professionals about when they're working on implementation projects with different people, you, you still never cease to be surprised. Some of the stories you get back about certain processes, certain companies are using a spreadsheet that was set up 15 years ago, which is still absolutely critical to their, to their planning and organization. You never cease to be surprised, trust me. Um, moving on to partnerships, which was something you mentioned very early on. How do you feel companies, particularly in the, in the Middle East, region can sort of leverage these strategic partnerships to enhance their procurement uh, capabilities? Yeah. See, one uh, unique thing about the region is uh, it's it's like many countries into one, right? There are several countries in the region. Every country has its own supply chain nuances. So from a partnership point of view, I think supplier-buyer relationships become absolutely critical. Uh, a lot of times buyer and supplier have to, you know, partner and work beyond the scope of a RFP, beyond the scope of a purchase order document, right, to really deliver something, uh, deliver something significant, uh, of, you know, of significant value for the end customers or the end consumers there. So supplier supplier relationships is even more critical in the region uh, because there are you know there's a lot of fragmentation there's a lot of local knowledge know how that is needed uh, number two is data driven decision making so partnerships also enable you get access to a lot of data uh, get access to a lot of use cases uh, which you can then internalize for your internal decision making right so uh, i think from collaboration point of view supply supplier buyer relationship data driven decision making uh, and lastly i would want to mention continuous improvement how do you, how do i continue to do better than what i was doing yesterday uh, right has really uh, is only possible when you are talking to a lot of people and more important importantly when you have right partnerships in place for areas wherein you don't have your own expertise in just going to go to some questions from the audience, which have already started coming in. We've got plenty of people saying hello as well. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Nice to say hello. Um, a question here from Iona. Um, Paya, she mentioned AI for customization at scale. But what about AI for supplier engagement and management? Oh, excellent. Nope. Uh, very nice question. I think from supplier engagement point of view, Again, you have to look at customization from a different angle. Uh, and again, I bring in my Middle East perspective here. What happens is there are a lot of suppliers uh, who are actually headquartered outside the region or you know have their origins outside the region and hence a lot of learnings and biases come in, right? If I am a American company or a Latin American company or a Chinese, Indian, Indo-Pacific company, right? So that's where, you know, a lot of AI, a lot of technology supplier collaboration can help you contextualize the supplier of, you know, many a times they are, uh, you know, what I see is a lot of suppliers, they come and try and sell the same box that has been sold in the other regions here, right? And that's where uh, customers or procurement teams can effectively, more effectively use AI technology to customize the solution and also help supplier develop or co-develop a solution for them, right? That's where a lot of uh, technology can play a role. Second would be when we talk about the long tail engagement of the suppliers, right? How do I manage the long tail of suppliers right from supplier onboarding to the contract adherence contract? Uh, I think one of the biggest use cases in AI, AI for us is contract management, uh, wherein you know a lot of smart contracts are being used. Uh, which effectively crunches our contract times from few weeks to few days and few hours in some cases as well. You specifically pick and choose the modules, the contract management tool tells you, you know, where you need to look, what are the potential areas wherein the supplier may fall, uh, may breach the contractual terms or may not perform as per the contractual terms, right? So contract management, supplier collaboration, and third would be supplier analytics, uh, right? In terms of performance, in terms of delivery, in terms of quality issues, in terms of sup his supply chain resilience, uh, right? So these three would be the most important point uh, or most biggest big rocks that procurement can solve for, uh, I should say. 
We are very nearly up to time, so one final question for you, and a recurring theme of this conversation has been about the pace of change, keeping up with that pace of change. What advice would you have for any, any procurement professionals in the area who are trying to keep up with the pace of change or be ahead of that curve? What advice would you have to them? Yeah, uh, I think procurement is a very, very integral per, uh, no, function now, uh, especially given in the given the change, fast changing environment. Uh, one imp most important advice is keep yourself updated with what's happening in the market. And secondly, keep yourself very up to date with your business, your own business's value drivers, right? So if I know what's happening in the market at, and I know very well what are the key business drivers for my decision. So you have to there, you know, when you think about your own business drivers, think like a business head, and then you would be able to better apply the supplier learnings, the learnings from the supply market to deliver higher value to your organization, right? That's how you could be more adaptable and more fast uh, yeah, in adapting to change. Very, very sound advice. Paish, thank you again so much for joining us. I always enjoy your uh, expertise and insight. You always lay it out so clearly. So thank you ever so much for joining us here at Procurement and Supply Chain Live Dubai. Thank you, Nate. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much indeed.